Welcome back to the Aubergine Chef. Now today we'll be making grasshopper cheesecake, which sounds a little unusual, but it's actually named after the grasshopper cocktail, which is, I think it's a combination of creme de cacao, which is basically a chocolate liqueur, um, creme de menthe, which is important because it brings the mint flavor into it, and then some kind of cream or milk um, or Baileys if you want a cocktail that's all alcohol. Um, but uh, this cheesecake is basically inspired from that cocktail, and we'll be incorporating pretty much the, all, those, the, all those liqueurs, all those alcohols, into the cheesecake batter to flavor it. Now, I'll go ahead and post the New York-style deli cheesecake, which is basically the plain version of this cheesecake, so that way you have the, you know, the regular recipe, so that way you can customize it yourself, or you can customize this recipe as well. So I'll have both of the recipes online, so that way you can take a look and pick and choose which one you want to do. Now, this time around, we're going to go ahead and make the... Uh, cookie crust. I'm actually going to use uh, chocolate cookies. I'm using, actually using Teddy Grahams. Most people like to use Oreo cookie crumbs, but couldn't find any, and I just didn't really feel like taking apart a bunch of Oreos and then grinding them up, so I just took Teddy Grahams, chocolate Teddy Grahams. So, I mean, Teddy Grahams is graham crackers, and it's chocolate graham crackers, so it's kind of like a graham cracker crust. So we'll be using that recipe from the website. Now I'm going to go ahead and double the recipe for the one pie. I don't think I'm going to need more than what the one pie recipe yields, but just in case, I went ahead and doubled it. So I have 10 ounces of ground crumbs. Now I ground them up in my food processor. And I also have up to 4 ounces of melted butter. So I have 4 ounces of melted butter in here. We'll probably need about 2 or 3 in total because I'm also going to add 1 egg white. Um, so that should, the egg white is optional, but it should strengthen the cookie crumbs so that way they hold their shape better when we take it out of the pan. Speaking of pans, if you have a springform pan, it's probably the best thing to use. You don't have to use the springform pan for cheesecake, but it helps keep your cheesecake in better condition. I have a springform pan, but it's 12 inches big, and it's like 4 inches deep, and I'm just like, I don't need that much cheesecake. So I'm going to go ahead and risk it and use a regular cake pan. So if you do use a regular cake, pan, cake pan, spray the bottom of your cake pan with pan release. Then this is probably one of the few times I'm going to recommend it. Put down at least one parchment paper circle on the bottom of your cake pan all the way around, so that way it releases all the way around. Normally I say you only need it in the middle, like this little piece or whatever for cake, but because a cheesecake has a graham cracker crust, it crumbles basically at any point, you want to make sure that the whole thing releases evenly, and the parchment paper is going to help release it evenly. Once you have that parchment paper in, uh, spray, the, uh, spray the paper itself and the sides as well. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to bake the cookie crust before we fill it with the cheesecake batter. Now, there's some debate whether you should do that or you shouldn't do that. Um, honestly, whatever you want to do is fine. Some people prefer to have it unbaked, and then bake it at the same time when you put the cheesecake in, and some people prefer to have it pre-baked, and then add the cheesecake batter, and then bake it again. Now, I think it's a little bit stronger if you pre-bake it, so I'm going to pre-bake it, but honestly, I don't know if there's a huge difference. So feel free to do it any way you want, especially if you're kind of tight on time. And uh, why don't we go ahead and start with the crumb, the crumb cracker crust. All right, so here are my crushed Teddy Graham crumbs. Make sure that if you do, do use a cookie from scratch, like a vanilla wafer crust, or if you blend up actual graham crackers, uh, that you sift through it with your hands and pull out any of the pieces and chunks that didn't uh, get ground up so that way you don't have these weird big pieces missing up your crust. So we're going to go ahead and add most of the butter. We'll add all of the egg white. And we'll mix it together until it's wet. You don't want it to be soggy. All right, so three ounces of butter plus one egg white should have been enough. As you can see, it kind of holds its shape. It forms into a ball without falling apart, but it's also not soupy, soggy, or anything like that. So just go ahead and continue mixing it so that way the ingredients are all mixed in together. And once you think everything is nice and wet and mixed together, we can go ahead and move on to our cake pan. Remember, if you have a springform cake pan, I definitely recommend using that for cheesecake so that way it stays nicer, but it's not necessary if you don't have it. So... Go ahead and line the bottom of the cheesecake or a cake pan with your crumbs. Make sure nice and compact. Then you want to go ahead and push it against the side. 
All right, so I ended up using pretty much almost all my crumbs, just a few crumbs left in the bowl. Um, I probably could just use them if I wanted to. So about 10 ounces of crumbs probably works for this recipe, so go ahead and double it. So 10 ounces of crumbs, three ounces of melted butter, and one egg white seems to be a good amount for a nine inch cake pan. It's about one, one and a half inches deep. So we're gonna go ahead and bake this at 375 degrees for about five to eight minutes until it's done. All right, so once your cookie crust comes out of the oven and it's finished, and the way you can tell it's done is that it feels dry to your touch, kind of like a cookie does, and it doesn't like give or anything like that. Now, if it's really hot, then it might like separate and give a little bit, but in general, it should basically feel like one solid cookie if you do bake it ahead of time. Now, if you put too much butter in or too much egg white in, it may not um, ever get really dry, especially if you put too much butter because the fat's kind of acting like, kind of like how pan release separates cakes from pans put too much butter in your crumbs, they kind of stay separated from each other. So that's why you want to make sure you're not to overuse butter. So go ahead and let that cool down all the way. While it's cooling down, you want to go ahead and start your cream cheese, or your, yeah, your cheesecake filling, sorry. And so what we have here is we have two eight ounce packages of cream cheese, and then I also have one eight ounce package of Neufchatel, or one third less fat cream cheese. Now you can use all cream cheese if you want, or you can use all Neufchatel cream cheese. I think um, a lot of my friends actually recommend using a blend. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, go ahead and mix these together until there's no more lumps. Okay, once it's all nice and creamy, and I forgot to mention that this is room temperature, if I did forget to mention, go ahead and add in eight ounces of granulated sugar. Go ahead and mix that in. Okay, once all your ingredients are light and mixed together, go ahead and scrape down the sides of your bowl, and we'll go ahead and add the egg, eggs in one by one. Now we've got 10 ounces of eggs, which is about five eggs. Each egg weighs about two ounces. It's usually a pretty good measurement on average. And the eggs are what's gonna provide most of the structure for your cream cheese, or for your cheesecake. So we'll go ahead and add them in. And then in between adding each egg, we're going to scrape them the side of our bowl. All right, so once all of your eggs get incorporated, now we can add the flavoring. All right, so here I have my grasshopper cocktail, basically, which is one and a half ounces of Bailey's, two ounces of creme de menthe, and about three quarters to one ounce of uh, Godiva liqueur or creme de cacao. So we'll go ahead and add that to our cream cheese batter, or cheesecake batter, I keep saying cream cheese, and we'll go ahead and mix that in. Now creme de menthe can come in a clear, but it can also come in green color, so it would give a nice green color to our cheesecake batter. All right, so I'm gonna taste my cheesecake batter to see if the flavor is strong enough. Um, if it's not, then I'll add more uh, creme, uh, creme de menthe. Um, I don't recommend doing this because it has raw eggs in it, but this is definitely one way to check if you have enough flavoring in your cheesecake. It could use a little bit more, but I'm actually pretty satisfied for how, how it tastes. So we're gonna go ahead and just use it the way it is. All right, so here is our cooled cookie crust. It's very hard to touch, so it's basically just like a regular cookie. And we're gonna rely on the cheesecake batter to kind of form itself around the cookies so that way it'll hold itself together. And it looks like I have a good amount of cheesecake batter, so I could have gone all the way to the top of the uh, pan. So you could probably use a two to three inch deep cheesecake pan. I'll go ahead and make that note in the recipe because I have quite a bit of leftover. If you do have a little bit of leftover in it, you can always refrigerate it and then make another one the next day. And I think I might do that because since I have so much leftover, I have enough to make one more cheesecake. So we're gonna go ahead and bake this at 300 degrees in a water bath and I'll show you what a water bath looks like. All right, so you have your oven preheated at 300 degrees. Granted, this isn't the best situation now that I have my oven wide open. But we'll go ahead and place our cheesecake on the sheet pan. Now the sheet pan is fairly deep. I'll probably be almost as deep as the cake pan, so keep that in mind too. I'm gonna go ahead and add water. This is probably the easiest way to do it, so that way you don't get water all over the place. 
You want to make sure you don't get water in your cake pan, of course. And you want to go up about halfway up at least um, the sides of the cake pan. If you can't, any water bath is better than no water bath. And what this does is it kind of insulates your cheesecake so that way it doesn't cook so fast on the sides, which helps prevent cracking and curdling. All right, looks like I got as much water as I can get in there. And we'll go ahead and push this in carefully. Okay, so it took about uh, 40, 45 minutes for our cheesecake to be done. And the way you can tell if it's done is you pull it out. And when you jiggle it, it shouldn't really move too much. It should have a very slight jiggle to it. But when you touch it, it doesn't really stick to your finger. All right, so I'm trying not to get my uh, pot holders wet, but I don't think there's much of an option. Take it out of the water bath and put it on a wire rack. Let it cool down to room temperature and then put it in the refrigerator for about three to four hours. All right, so <clears throat> our grasshopper cheesecake can sit up overnight. I actually have two of them. Like I said, this, the original recipe makes two cheesecakes or basically one tall New York style like the four, five, six inch ones. So I'll make sure I make a note of that on my recipe. Uh, so if you have a springform pan, ideally that would be the easiest way to release this. But there is still a way that you can release it without using a springform pan. So carefully run your knife along the edge of the pan. Go ahead and get it started. Remember we have the parchment paper circle on the bottom helping us out on the bottom. Okay, basically. Now this is probably going to make some of you guys cringe, but I'm going to do it anyway. Put about an this is about a nine inch cake, so put about an, an eight inch cake circle onto the cheesecake. Flip it over, pop it out. Now, if you have um, corn syrup or caro syrup, that works really well as a glue. Um, actually, I should put a glue because I don't want it sliding around because it is a cheesecake. I'm going to put a little bit of ganache, but corn syrup works a little bit better. And flip it over again. And center it and take off the board. And that's pretty much it. Now you're going to have, you might have a little bit of a line or something forming on the top. If you're not comfortable with that, um, you can go ahead and use the spring form pan, absolutely. It will help you avoid that. Um, or you can decorate the top of it so that way we can hide it. And that's what we're going to do. Now this is basically, again, this is just a way for people who don't have a springform pan to still be able to make a nice cheesecake. Now cheesecake is basically a custard. It's not really cake, it's not really a pie, it's a custard because it's set up by the eggs that we put into it. And the cheese, the cream cheese, also gives it a nice thick structure. So that way you don't have to worry about it breaking or anything like that if you baked it well um, in the oven. So why don't we go ahead and decorate it. I forgot to mention too that I went ahead and let my cheesecake sit up overnight so that way it was nice and extra firm. I don't know if you guys ever care about this, but my dog Pumpkin always does this when I'm doing an episode. He's literally always there and sometimes he even sits on my feet. So if you ever hear him breathing in the background, that's why. I don't know what it is. He doesn't like it when I'm talking to basically nobody in the kitchen, but that's what he does. Anyway, so what I'm going to use to decorate this is some leftover ganache I have in the refrigerator. All ganache is, or at least this ganache is, is a one-to-one -one ratio of heavy cream that was boiled on the stove with uh, equal amounts of chocolate chips, so one-to-one -one ratio. Take the boiled heavy cream, add it to your chocolate chips, and just stir it very carefully. Not like You're not trying to whip a bear, but you're just trying to stir it and stir it and stir it until it comes together and looks nice and even. You can also add in a little bit of butter and a little bit of alcohol. I think this one actually has Kahlua in it. So that way it has a little bit more of a flavor. Uh, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it into a piping bag. You can also drizzle it with a spoon, but this ganache is particularly runny, so I want to make sure it has a nice look to it. Okay, you always want to cut a hole smaller than you think you need for your piping bag. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to drizzle it. It's going to hit the board, but that's okay. I can clean up the board. That's pretty much it. 
And if you want to, you can go the other direction, but I'm going to leave it just like this. I might go the other direction with the additional cheesecake I have. So go ahead and let this set up. It won't take any time at all because the cheesecake is pretty cold. I'm going to clean up my board before it gets set up, and um, we'll wrap it up. All right, so that's how you make the grasshopper cheesecake. Remember that you can alter this recipe, and I'll also have the New York style deli, the New York deli style cheesecake on my website as well as this one. So that way you have the plain version, so you have some start from scratch. But you can alter this one, you can alter that one to basically any flavor you want. Just make sure that you remember to balance it out with the number of eggs. If you add a lot of liquid, you're going to need a little bit more eggs in your um, cheesecake because that's mostly what's setting it up is the eggs. So anyway, I hope you learned a lot today. Thanks for watching, and remember, the aubergine chef, demons to find dessert, one recipe at a time.